Hi there, it's Nicole for Pretty Pink Posh, and today I have a Valentine's themed card featuring a watercolored little chick with a dimensional scallop frame using some fun foam. I'm going to go ahead and die cut the components for my frame first. I'm going to die cut a square using the Lawn Fawn Small Stitched Square Stackables out of watercolor cardstock. That's going to be the background of my card. I love this die because it's exactly the same size as this scallop frame from Pretty Pink Posh. Using the scallop frame, I'm going to die cut that from some smooth white cardstock. I'm also going to die cut an additional square from some smooth white cardstock and die cut the smaller scallop frame right in the center of that. So I'm going to run those through at the same time. I'm going to use all of these as layers to build up that dimensional frame. So I'll go ahead and die cut that square as well. I'm using a little post-it tape to hold that in place and I'm going to really carefully remove my die cut here from this and hopefully kind of keep those two frames together with the post-it tape. That way I can die cut that frame again or those pieces again from fun foam this time. Go ahead and pop out that little center piece. I am gonna keep the scalloped frame piece. This is that fun foam and you can see the post-it tape held those two frames together pretty well. I can go ahead and run that through and this is gonna give me that those dimensional frames. So I'll have not only the square frame, but that scallop square frame as well. Then I'm gonna take my larger of the two scalloped square dies from Pretty Pink Posh and die cut that from Fun Foam as well. This is gonna give me all of the pieces I need to create that great dimensional frame. Now on my watercolor background, I did kind of just draw a little edge there with my pencil so I knew exactly where the frame was gonna be. And I stamped the chick from the little Pretty Pink Posh mini stamp set, just a note, with Antique Linen Distress Ink. I purposely stamped it with something really light that would blend in with these other watercolored distress marker colors but still give me a little bit of a guideline to go by so I could see where I was coloring. Then I simply colored the spun sugar marker on an acrylic block, dipped my paintbrush in the water, and gave the chick a nice um, base coat with the spun sugar ink. I'm pulling in a little picked raspberry now to really build up that color and add some nice dimension. Just blending these both out trying to avoid the beak as much as possible. Go ahead and color that all. When I get it kind of shaded how I want, I will go ahead and hit that with my heat tool so it's really good and dry. And then I will color the ripe persimmon distress marker on my acrylic block, dip my damp paintbrush in that, and color in the beak and the feet on my little chick. I'm using a little candied apple distress ink to kind of draw in some of those lines. I don't want them to be too terrible harsh. They were a little too harsh as I laid them down, so I'm just applying a little water over them to blend it out a little bit more. A little picked raspberry for the cheeks there where it's still lighter on the face. Then I'll hit that with my heat gun again so it's really good and dry and erase my pencil line and draw in the eyes with a black permanent marker. All the way around my chick now, I am using a little bit larger paintbrush dipped in water to apply just the water to the background of my piece here. And then I'm going to take some tumbled glass and peacock feathers distress ink and start laying down some color. Now, I decided it was going to distort my background too much, so I'm going to tape down that panel to a board to kind of help keep it flat and then go back in with my peacock feathers and tumbled glass distress inks and apply a little bit of blue to that background to give it the illusion of a blue sky or something like that just to give a little bit of color to that background. 
go ahead and color that whole thing in very, very light. Again, I'm going to hit that with my heat tool when I am like the, how the background looks. And then I will go back in. I just went in and pulled in a little bit more color onto the chick. I thought it needed just a tiny bit more, so I did pull in a little bit more picked raspberry there. Then I'm going to take some pumice stone distress marker, lay that down on my acrylic block, and then grab a damp paintbrush and draw in a little bit of a landscape or ground there. Again, I will hit that with my heat tool so it's really good and dry and stamp the greeting from the Just a Note stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh using a black dye ink. This is the black licorice ink from Lawn Fun. Then taking the same Distress Ink colors that I used for the Chick, the Spun Sugar, Picked Raspberry, and Candied Apple, I'm going to stamp some hearts. I did decide he needed, needed one of those little envelopes from the Just a Note stamp set in his hand, so I did stamp that with the Antique Linen right over my light blue background, and I'm going to color that in with the Candied Apple Distress Ink marker. Just picking that up with a little bit of damp paintbrush, color that in. I did pull in a little pumice stone distress marker as well to draw that flap back in on the envelope so you could see it a little bit better. I made sure and hit this with my heat tool. I tried to do it with the candied apple first and it just blended too much in, so I hit it with my heat tool and then pulled in that pumice stone to give a little definition to the flap of the envelope. I can blend that out with a little more candied apple distress ink if I need to. Now I can go ahead and stamp those hearts. I did draw in, I guess, a little bit more of that pumice stone just to give a little definition right around the wings on the chick. With watercolor, it never, you have to embrace the imperfection of it. <laughs> Once that is done, I'm just hitting it with my heat gun real quick. I am going to go back and grab those three colors of ink that I mentioned a little bit ago and start stamping those hearts. I'm using both, both first and second generation stamping to give even more variety to the colors shown there. And I think the hearts really kind of tie the whole thing together and add such a fun element to the background of this card. So I'll just continue to stamp these all over. Um, I stamped a few of them too high up. I kind of forgot I was going to be covering up some of those edges with my frame. So some of those hearts are not gonna be visible. Once I pulled my frames out and realized that I wanted a few additional hearts that too many of them were not going to show up. I stamped a few additional hearts just to make sure that there were plenty in the background once all of those frames were in place. I'm going to just draw a line around all four edges with a nice strong adhesive. This is the Glue Glider Permatac adhesive. And then place my Fun Foam frame square frame down first. Draw a line of glue adhesive inside that and place my scallop fun foam frame down. That's from the smaller of the two square scallop dies. Then I will attach the white cardstock square within a square frame. I'll go ahead and draw the glue line on my paper frame and lay that right down inside of it to cover up the fun foam. Then I'm gonna go around all four edges of this frame and lay down my Fun Foam Square Scallop frame, the larger of those two. Go ahead and draw a line of glue all the way around my paper frame, place that on top, and then I'll finish by attaching this whole thing to a white four and a quarter square card base, and that will finish up this super sweet watercolored frame dimensional card. Thanks for watching this video showcasing Pretty Pink Posh Stamps and Dies. Here are a couple more videos you might be interested in. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.